there appears to be a bit of a confusion going on in fundamentalist circles, uh, particularly those fundamentalists who go about claiming that evolution is just a theory. I think we need to understand the difference between fact and theory. Facts are things that can be observed. Theories are the models we devise as scientists to try and describe what is going on, to try and explain or to, to, to try and provide a mechanism by which we can work out what will go on in the future. So, if you take an apple and you hold it a meter above the ground and you let go, it will fall down. If you shoot something into space and you look down at this planet, you will observe that this planet revolves around the sun. Those are facts. How to describe them, how to explain them, how to model those facts into something that can be predictive, that is called a theory. And the first theory that tried to explain how apples fall and planets revolve around the sun was invented by a man named Isaac Newton. And a pretty good theory it was. It wasn't good enough. And later on another man called and uh, Albert Einstein came up with a better theory that explained, in most cases, everything just as well as Newton's, and in a few cases, even better. And so, people and physicists and other scientists are still trying to come up with even better theories to explain gravity and other physical phenomena. Another observed fact is that if you look at strata, geological strata, you find fossils. And as you go down through those strata into older strata, you'll find different fossils. Not only that, if you look at those fossils and you compare them to each other, you will find that there is a clear progression from the older uh, fossils to the newer forms in more recent fossils. A clear progression from older to newer forms. Life has evolved. So the evolution of life is an observed fact. So what are people saying then when they say evolution is only a theory? They are confusing the fact with a theory that describes it. There is a theory to describe the evolution. It's a it's a theory that was designed to explain the fact that life has evolved over those billions of years that the planet has existed. The first man to come up with a theory that explained it well enough to hold up to scrutiny was a man named Charles Darwin. His theory was quite successful, but it had its problems, and in the beginning of last century it was actually in a bit of trouble. But thankfully, after the, the discovery of DNA, we solved a lot of these problems, and Darwin's theory not only survived, but it got integrated into something better, named the new synthesis. And that work is not the end of it either, because things have moved on. In the last 20 years or so, we have made enormous progress in understanding embryology, and how fetuses develop in the womb or in eggs or any other uh, larval development, for example. And we have discovered more supporting uh, evidence and that allows us to improve the theory even further. What is the most amazing thing about all this theorizing about evolution is that the bedrock of the most modern theories of evolution is still Mr. Charles Darwin's original theory. It is still an integral part of the theories that describe the fact of evolution. And that is amazing. No other theory has been so successful. But remember this, that as life has evolved is a fact. What Darwin has come up with is only a theory 
that describes those facts. So if you are saying evolution is only a theory, what you mean to say is that Charles Darwin's ideas about evolution and modern ideas about evolution, modern theories of evolution are only a theory. And of course they are. But no theory changes the facts. Apples fall. The earth revolves around the sun. Those facts don't change. Even if we tomorrow uh, replace Albert Einstein's theories of gravity with something else again. And if we tomorrow come up with a better theory of evolution, then that might replace Charles Darwin's work. But it does not change the fact that life has evolved and will continue to evolve. Thank you.